Hello everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and we are here today in Fernville and we are actually going to be checking in on each and every one of our biodomes today just to kind of get an overview on how everything is doing because it feels like it has been some weeks since we have really had a chance to properly come over and appreciate Fernville and appreciate all of our other biomes and now that I know you can only have a total of six biodomes I'm really feeling like Fernville and not Kansas, Pirate Canyon and Bamboo Grove which represent the four different types of biomes that you can have in uh, the Taito Ecology game right now. I think that those four biomes are going to be like our forever biomes. We might have little goals with them, but for the most part, we're just putting things down, seeing how life changes as time passes. What is this? <gasps> what is this? Oh my gosh! And being constantly surprised. So that's what I was trying to say here. Look at all of these guys. There's so many babies and they're all sleeping. And is that a cat? Is that an ocelot? Just roaming. There's so much food here. Look at all the Lagotis. They're just, they're just snoozing away. Oh my goodness. And there's tortoises that are just sound asleep. Is everybody okay? I feel like I just stumbled on that scene in Sleeping Beauty where everything is just like sound asleep. But yeah, what I was trying to say is that I'm realizing you can have experimental um, biomes, but it's a little bit tricky because the experiments may not work the way you think they would in real life just because of the way the game is set up. And we're just going to have to roll with that. So we'll have our experimental biomes. We're going to have two of those at a time. Right now it's Wolf Prairie and Wolf Mountain. But otherwise, we're just going to let life kind of flow in the other four biomes. So I'm not really going to have any specific plans plans for Fernville other than having some fun and so we might see the ebb and flow of the entire biome as time goes on and I might have you guys do some really fun straw polls where you can vote what we should add into a certain biome and we'll use a random generator to decide how many items we should add in those kinds of things just to see what happens because I'm realizing with the four biomes that we're going to keep pretty much forever we're never really going to have an end goal with them it's just going to be watching as they grow and change organic over time. There we go. I kind of wanted to sit here till they all woke up. Look at him go. Look at him scuttle, scuttle, scuttle. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. That is so cute. So yeah, today's goal is I really wanted to come in and spend a little bit of time in Fernville and see how it's doing. I want to visit all of the biomes, but geez, that was adorable. So apparently the Agoti population is doing very, very well over here. So why don't we make sure they have enough food? They primarily eat fruits, but also consume seeds, roots, tubers, and leaves. So let's get them something with some fruit. Can I put in a few? Yeah, there we go. Amazon flame bushes. So yeah, I do want to try to visit all of our biomes. It is important to do that as well, especially if you're like me and you leave your biomes kind of running in the background so that they can earn up lots of Taito coins. We're very low on Taito coins, so it would be very, very helpful for us if we visited all of the different biomes and we'll use up the energy that we have in there to kind of help improve them a little bit. Or I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not really improve in quotation marks for our four main biomes. It's just kind of like throwing things in there and then watching as life may change in there so you can't really I guess that's true for a lot of biomes even in real life that's sort of a debate among biologists are you improving a system if you try to maintain it or are you inhibiting it from growing and changing and shifting with climate change and the movement of species there's a fine balance between preserving a natural area and not letting it follow a natural course of growth and that's a huge source of debate for a lot of people when it comes to climate change and with protecting different species so it's worth thinking about and for our biomes we're not going to so much try to keep like one area perfectly preserved so it always has this species we're just going to start throwing things in and watching as time changes like the agotes now is apparently the era of the agotes because there's so many babies everywhere and they're so cute uh, let's put down a few more flame trees i do like how flame trees have fruit and they've got so many leaves so they can cover quite a few species needs that way. Oh, can I put another one on this little island? I like putting things on the islands because I think, oh, it's just so cute when you can do that, you know? All right. You know what would be really cool? An anaconda. I would, I would pay good money just for an anaconda. <laughs> Like if it was a single species download and it was an anaconda, I would be right there. I would be all over that. I love anaconda. I think they're just beautiful. And they, they can be pretty fast, but I've never seen them as a particularly aggressive snake whenever I'm watching people in documentaries interact with them. Um, it takes 
like they're I wouldn't say it takes a lot to provoke them because they're just kind of ambushy predators. They're going to eat what they're going to eat when they can eat it, but they don't go out of their way to like rip you to shreds the way that some animals who are more aggressive, like I hear badgers are, might. So anyway, rambling. I'm just excited. But that's my plan, basically, is to no longer try to go, oh, we always need to have ocelots in this area. Oh, we always need to have the jaguar in this area. We're just going to come into the main four and improve it. And then the spots where we're going to really think hard about like, what do we want in this particular biome are going to be our two experimental biomes, like our wolves, who hopefully we'll be able to check on in just a minute. All right, so if we're going to check on all the biomes, then I need to get moving because there's so many of them. <laughs> a group of mushrooms has died. A group of blue morphos has died in zone two. Now that's interesting. All right, take me to zone two, please. I need to turn on our territory markers as well. What zone am I in right now? Zone five. All right, Albot, let us fly. Zone one. Zone two. So blue morphos has died, huh? All right, and let's keep a good eye on our territory markers. Ah, these guys are having... Oh, Kodamundis, survive, little ones, survive. They've got some babies, though. Marsh deer. Let's see, maybe if I get another population of marsh deer. The marsh deer population is struggling over here, but not over here. So, and not over here. And they have a little bit of overlap. So I wonder if they're kind of being... They're kind of being able to keep each other balanced. So I wonder who's eating them. Do we still have our jaguars? All right, so here's our jaguar. Cannot reproduce. There's only one jaguar. How on earth? You would think looking around that there's enough food for the other jaguars. That is interesting, my friends. That is very interesting. Huh. And yeah, the jaguar territory comes all the way to this point. Well, fascinating. I wonder who's eating the jaguars. All right, well, let's add in a marsh deer. We should probably speed things up really quickly. I think we'll add in another marsh deer population and we'll check on the rest of the history for this biome. It looks like the ferns are spreading really, really well. So ferns are really going all over the place. I wonder if that means the marsh deer would have enough to eat. Let's put some marsh deer over here and then we'll see how they do. All right, and then anything else, any other news? Mushrooms, really low populations of mushrooms. I'm assuming that's a goatee, maybe eating them. Mostly in zone one. All right. Yeah, mostly this is just like warnings about mushrooms. Do mushroom populations spread on their own? Uh, low population. Yeah, it looks like primarily our tortoises weren't able to escape whoever came to eat them. But otherwise, they've been doing okay. I really thought more would be dead after leaving everyone alone for so long. But no, it's just mushrooms. Just mushrooms need a little bit of help. Just mushrooms. And you know, I don't think this area really has that many agotes or small prey items that could help out the mid-level prey with not getting eaten so quickly. So we'll put down a couple populations of them because they really don't need much in the way of care to survive. A group of mushrooms has died. Dun, dun, dun. All right, and that's how Fernville is doing. So good. And we stumbled on the sleeping fields of little rodents, which was absolutely adorable. So let's go ahead and we will go back to the main main. All right. No, what? A group of bobcats has died. What has killed the bobcats? What is going on here? Oh my goodness gracious. All right, let's get down here, you guys. It loads! We can actually load and we can start moving around. Oh my gosh. And the coyotes are hungry. There's only one coyote over here. There's a bobcat group over here. There's badgers. Oh boy. You guys, I don't see... There's almost no prey. What happened to everybody? Not Kansas was overflowing with problems and now there's no more problems. Oh my gosh. And there's so much grass. There's so much grass. Oh my goodness gracious. Are all of the deer mice dead? This is amazing. All right. Well, clearly we need to put something down here really quickly. Um, we need, I mean, we don't want to have an overflowing population of deer mice, but we need some deer mice. So I'm going to put down a couple populations of those to use up. And ooh, ooh, ooh. We need, we need jackrabbits. Jackrabbits should be so useful. They, there's plenty of food here for jackrabbits, and then they'll be able to be prey for the bobcats and the coyotes, so that would be really good. Yeah, there's like no prey items here. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we'll get those guys down to use up our energy for a second, and let's check what has happened. Bison? How did the bison die? There's so much grass. There's so, what prairie dogs, bobcats starving, coyotes, prairie dogs. How did our bison 
Bandai! How do you just lose bison? How did everyone starve to death? Everyone starved to death. Everyone starved to death. I don't understand how that happened. I mean, we had so many deer mice and then they all got eaten. Was it the coyotes that did it? I think the coyotes did it, you guys. The ants were dying off. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we'll put down some frogs. There's plenty of ants for them to eat. I can't believe it. How did our bison die? I mean, they're big. I don't think we have anybody. Can coyotes hunt the bison? Can they? I, I'm sort of in shock right now. I really didn't expect that outcome. I mean, we don't even have a cougar or a gray wolf or anything. We just have coyotes and like a badger. We have a lot of coyotes actually. I don't recall this many coyote populations. I think our coyotes may have spread. We still have some bobcats. And then over here we have some proghorn antelopes uh, somewhere. We have like two. What happened? What happened? Not Kansas. You are kind of vicious. I don't even see anybody over here. Man, this place is kind of vicious, you guys. <laughs> Every time I think that everybody's going to be fine and just kind of putter along on their own over here. No, it's not the case. All right, well, we'll put a honeybee down over here. Let's get some more antelope, maybe. Is it really just that many coyotes can take out that many antelope? Because that's sort of stunning. And we'll put down some common milkweed, which is poisonous. It can only be consumed by a certain marked consumers. Good to know. And some of the little milk vetch. We'll put that down along the edges here and have some food for our antelope. And then we'll get some more small level herbivores over here to hopefully feed our hungry, hungry omnivores and feed our hungry, hungry um, coyotes. I think the coyote population is what did it. Oh, there's a bobcat. Are you hungry, little one? He's like, I'm starting to get hungry and I have no food. Well, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put some jackrabbits down. And yeah, we don't wanna be overflowing by the armies of deer mice like we were before, but we we can't just let like, I mean, bobcats eating, what? Oh, it was just like filling up. Bobcats eating mice is a thing that happens. <laughs> so it's okay if we have some mice for the bobcats to eat. I can't believe this. I can't believe they've eaten so many of our little animals. All right, well, I guess we're gonna go ahead. Uh, what's some other things we could put down? Cottonwood, the sumac probably. These guys I really like, the honey mesquites or however you pronounce it. Oh, that's what all the barbecue sauce is named after where I'm from. <laughs> it just hit me. It always has this, this is the name of the barbecue sauce from where I grew up in the Midwest. I was like, I know I recognize that, but I didn't know it was a tree, all right, or a bush I should say. There we go, leafy plant. So we'll we'll fill it in. It looks like the cone flowers have really spread out quite a bit. So we'll fill it in a little bit. Western sand cherry. I wanna see what the sand cherry looks like. Hurry up and give me some energy for the sand cherry. All right, and it looks like this little proghorn antelope is two years old and doing pretty well. We have a hungry, hungry bobcat over here who seems to be doing pretty well. Oh, it's a tiny little thing. You're kind of cute. Do you look like really cool when you're when you're all flowered out? Neat. Oh, look at the bunnies. So many bunnies. I think we need more rabbit populations. I think that's a thing that needs to happen. <gasps> Who's this? Who's this? Oh, it's a bunny. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think we're going to have fun actually rotating between all of the different biomes and just kind of being constantly surprised at how things have advanced or how things have gotten a little bit interesting. Look at all this stuff over here. I mean, we've just got fields of flowers. It's so pretty. It's just so pretty. Look at all the prairie blazing star. I love it. We need to make sure they have proper pollinators. I mean, what's also fun is to come over, isn't it? And see what has changed and to alter what we do, like what we put down based off of how it's changed. Because if we had a whole bunch of beautiful flowers like this, then in my opinion, some bees should move in. I think a bunch of bees would show up to, or moths, bees and moths, to come over here and take care of these flowers. Because they would be like, hey, there's flowers, there's food here. So that would be fun too, to change where we put things down based off of like all of what shows up. Like when we were in Fernville just a little bit ago, it would have been fun to put down maybe some of these smaller omnivores or predators because there were so many little tiny herbivores everywhere. So I think that's how I'm gonna be treating all of our biomes in the future. I've been trying to figure that out if you guys can't tell from my rambling today. 
over what kind of relationship I really want to start having with the biomes, how we're going to affect things, how we're going to play, how we're going to accept that there's not really a goal, it's just kind of what you create. And I'm, I love sandbox games like that though. It's just figuring out how you're going to frame the questions that you have to, you have to work on. All right, there we go, there we go. All right, so I think this area, I want to add some heather aster because they're very pretty. Um, and a group of mushrooms has just died. <laughs> Oh, so I think we also probably have to put down a whole bunch of mushrooms, actually. Because they're going to be important for all of those tiny rodents we just added to eat. But hopefully, putting down a whole bunch of rabbits and a whole bunch of mice will help to balance things out a teeny bit. Because it looks like it just, like there was nothing here. Everybody, this big open field... See what I mean? This to me looks like a spot where some rabbits could show up because this place suffered so immensely when the deer mice just exploded in population that I'm hesitant to put down tons of deer mice again. But it is important just to acknowledge like, look at all this grass. I We need some bison. Come on. Come on. This is this is clearly a place that if I was going to be a herd of bison, I would look at this and go, this is delicious. Look at this variety of greenery to eat. Of course I'm going to come and make my home here. So we'll put some bison down in just a second. I don't want to spend my Taito coins though. So let's come down and admire this adorable badger sleeping next to some mushrooms. Because that's actually really cute. <laughs> Look at you little buddy. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. I wish you could like name the population even. Uh, it, actually that would be really fun if you could name one of the uh, territories so that you could watch like army a of deer mice starts spreading and it's like army a subset two that has transferred over to this area oh dear all right so i don't know why this coyote did you just like have a fight with a bobcat i'm not sure it was getting to the point where there was only bobcats and coyotes all right and here we go i'm gonna put the bison right smack dab in the middle of this giant patch of grass because <laughs> i feel like oh look you can't even see him this stuff is so tall I mean, look at these guys. There's so much food here. There's so much food. They should have a good time. They should be able to just really sincerely run around and enjoy themselves. Look at how pretty that looks. Come on. That's just lovely. I want switchgrass everywhere. That's my new goal is to get switchgrass, whatever. Is this switchgrass? Yeah, switchgrass growing all over here and then fill it with bison because that is so pretty. All right, switchgrass, accommodate me. And then let's put some of this down here and then hopefully it'll spread. There we go. All right, good luck this time, little bison. Well, guys, it seems like Not Kansas is going to survive after all. I had my doubts when we had the deer mice apocalypse, but they seem to be recovering pretty well. And I'm very happy with Fernville, actually. I think Fernville is turning out quite interesting because it's no longer just an empty echo of of space where the prey are all dying and the predators don't have anything to eat uh oh gosh who the heck is eating who's eating my earthworms is it you mr prairie dog all right and yeah i'm just starting to finally get into the um groove of things and realizing that this is more about the constant adventure putting things down and then coming back to see how the story has changed without you rather than trying to really control or guide where things go and it's really fun because i love stories like that where's the little bobcat going let's go see what the bobcat goes to eat constant surprise all right dun 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 oh there goes the prairie dog <laughs> All right, so the bobcat's pretty happy because it had some prairie dog to eat. Noted. All right, well, I'll see you guys next time. I thought we were going to get through all of the biomes today, but actually there's a lot to do in each one. So next time we will go and visit our good area, Pyrite Canyon, for our desert. And then we will move on to Bamboo Grove and check how it's doing. And then we'll rotate back and check in on the wolves that we are trying to take care of in our two experimental biomes. So until next time, guys, bye-bye.